computer. Okay, there we go. So welcome here, everyone. Um, just wanted to thank uh, Black History Manitoba Celebration Committee, committee for uh, sharing their Zoom uh, account with us and, and partnering up with us. It's, they really made uh, what we do a lot better and we're excited to be uh, in partnership with them. And it's really nice to have more than 40 minutes because we're always sort of rushed at the end. And uh, thanks to um, our wonderful co-host, thanks to everyone for coming. Just want to mention again, uh, the winner gets a uh, $10 gift card from uh, Petrocan. So I want to thank um, Superlube for that because uh, the company I work for bought a oil change for our car and we got a free coupon, but I'm going to get that away. So I hope that's, so. that's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so is everybody logged in? Or is it, sorry, is anybody not logged in? I know like, it's hard to ask everyone to speak for everybody, but if anyone needs more time to get set up, let us know. Okay, it sounds like uh, we're a go. So uh, Jen, take it away. Three, two, one, here we go. Who was praised as the heroine of Lunenburg after the town was sacked in 1782? Sylvia, a black woman enslaved by Colonel John Creighton, Phyllis Wheatley, Margaret Garner, or Lucy Terry Prince? So just get on Google and try to Google the hero in Lunenburg and see what her name was and then uh, go vote. And you got to vote on uh, the crowd per website. Uh, a lot of people who are new will, will click on the Zoom screen and try to click on. We, we just Don't put get that tricked. in the Zoom, you know, so. Don't get the tricked. Recording, right? oh, what's it's that a again? trap. It's a trap. <laughs> That's right. It's a trap. Carrie's really got a good system. She puts the, she sets up her web browser over top of my little Zoom window, so. I actually, when, um, when Jen was saying she had two monitors set up, I was like, oh, I have another monitor beside me. I should just plug that in. So I did. Yeah. So if you were to vote right now, you'd get 69 points. But if you were to vote right now, you get 68 points or 67. So it kind of counts down uh, towards zero as, as people need more time. Five votes. Okay, is that everybody? That is everyone okay. to the best of my knowledge. Congratulations, everyone. For okay, let's uh, let's see who got that right. Only everybody. Okay, way to go, everybody. <laughs> so we, we know something now. Did anyone know that before? Over tonight? No, cool. Okay. Yeah, she's a Canadian, uh, black uh, Canadian badass. So. And you have talking points, Michael? Oh, I'll, I'll talk about that while they're Googling the next thing. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, on to the next question. What did Sylvia do to earn this praise? She carried an apron full of gun cartridges and musket balls up the hill to the blockhouse to aid in the fight. She threw herself over the body of the Colonel's youngest son, Joseph, when the house was being fired upon. She stashed away the family's valuables in a small chest, then sat on it, hiding the chest under her skirt, or D, all of the above. So there's a short story about Sylvia and it was written by a woman named Joyce Barkhouse, um, who I'd never heard of, but uh, when I, was, I learned a bit about her when I was getting ready for this. Uh, Join, Joyce Barkhouse was Margaret Atwood's aunt. You know, she wrote about the heroine of Lunenburg. Did you find the actual short story, Michael? No. 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 
We have five votes. Well. The correct answer was D, all of the above. Okay. Question three. of the Baptist contingent of the African-American loyalists. Dr. Joseph T. Hill, David George, Calvert Lane, or Chico Tohomaso. We have five votes. Everyone answered correctly. The correct answer was David George. Wow. I'm liking the all correct answers. This is uh, working good. Can you show us the score? I can. Oh, wait, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's exciting to see too. Carrie, oh my goodness. Bye. Seven, but it is very close. And we all know how quickly it can change, too. Yeah. Yes. So Rhonda said in the chat, yeah, that's her pastor, <laughs> Calvert Le Leanne. Am I pronouncing that right? But uh, it was David George that uh, was the, the one in the 1780s or 1870s or whatever. <laughs> I'm glad you caught I'm glad you caught that. Okay, question four. After David George's house was destroyed by racist mobs in the 1784 Shelburne riots, where did he move to? Lunenburg, Stellarton, Digby, or Birchtown? Just say a little bit about David George while people are Googling. Um, that uh, race riot they referred to was North America's first and uh, George's predominantly black church was central. Uh, his presence in town became a lightning rod for racist anger. So a white uh, couple who went to the church uh, were going to be baptized, but a mob of uh, the white, yeah, a mob of the wife's uh, relatives disrupted the service to stop the baptism, and then they got the government involved to decide it could go, it could happen. So the service went ahead, but uh, a few years later, uh, a a mob attacked David. Jer David George and that kind of sparked 10 days of rioting, which is. Which I don't want to talk too much about because there's more questions coming.
We have five votes, all correct. The correct answer was Birchtown. Way to go. All right. So before we do the next question, I just want to talk about prizes again. Um, there's only one winner, but everybody who's new um, or anybody who wants a second one uh, gets a copy of this uh, little, little uh, yearly planner uh, from Black History Manitoba Celebration Committee again. So it's got a little thing where you can write uh, appointments in and stuff like that. So uh, if you're new here or if you want a second one and you're worried I forgot, just put your, uh, just send me your address in, in the chat. You can do that privately if you don't want anyone to uh, track you down or uh, you've got, you can send an email to, you got an email from Eventbrite so you can send an email to non-trib trivia if you want to be more private. But there's, um, yeah, in, in the Zoom chat, you can send a private message. You just gotta click on my name and then uh, click on the three dots and send a message. All right. And if people would like to chip in for prizes, uh, we've got a website where you can do that really easy and uh, send us a dollar or two or three. Um, so our prizes are all stuff we give away. Um, so if you wanna help out with that, uh, there's a link in the chat and feel free to click on that uh, so you can use it later. All right, Jen. Okay, question five. Which Nova Scotia town banned Negro dances and Negro frolics? Was it Lunenburg, Shelburne, Digby, or Stellarton? So the town of Birchtown that you just learned about, um, during the 10 days of rioting where all the black people were driven out of town, uh, there's another community called Birchtown, but that's uh, like in people who kind of lived in the swamps. Uh, it's not really more of a camp than a town by, by what I'm reading. Uh, so, um, but after there were, like after the riot ended in 10 days, uh, the attacks came, went on for another month because rioters would get together in uh, Shelburne and then make an incursion into Birchtown and then um, stir up trouble and then go, go back. So that, that continued uh, you know, after the 10 days of riding. For a month. In Birchtown, there's nothing left there. There's some holes in the ground, but uh, and the town isn't, uh, isn't, isn't around anymore. We have five votes. The correct answer is Shelburne. Does anyone follow Desmond Cole on, on Twitter? Desmond Cole wrote a book called uh, The Skin We're In. No. Okay. I don't, but I will now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah his Twitter handle is Negro Follicks. Follicks. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Oh, scores. Does that say Carrie? Did you catch him? Is that what I saw there? Yep. Oh she my God! An, look how look how close it is. Oh my God! Points. <laughs> wow. That's wild. Hey, uh, Jen. Let's. Why don't you tell Sarah about the and everyone who's new about the lightning rounds in case they're feeling discouraged because there is a chance to catch up at the end. Okay, so the final question, question nine today, um, is a lightning round. So the points increase, the time during which you have to answer decreases, so you go with your gut. Uh, major payoff for going with your gut and getting the correct answer. 
not a lot of time to Google. In fact, if you if you haven't answered before Jenna's finished reading the question, you're not doing the lightning round. <laughs> Correct. Jen, you're you're not wrong. Generally, I don't even read them. I'll maybe I'll I'll read the question, but not the not the options. Uh, okay, question six. What key anti-slavery law was enacted in 1787? The Upper Canadian Act Against Slavery, the Northwest Ordinance, also known as the Ordinance of 1787, the Slavery Abolition Act, or Alexander II's Emancipation Manifesto. say a little bit more about Negro frolics while uh, you're Googling. Um, when they passed the law, the uh, frolicking continued. So <laughs> Shel Shelburne had to escalate things. So they, were, they banned uh, Black Canadians from having church services as well. And uh, yeah, it's a messed up place. No gathering for any, I'm sorry, they didn't ban church services, pardon me, anything non-religious. So church service is the only place where they're allowed to be together outside their own homes. So. I'm liking the Googling. You're learning about something that really, uh, really important that uh, isn't talked about too often. So it's. Uh... Less than a minute to go. We're just waiting on one vote. Mm
Okay, the vote is closed. We have one vote for the correct answer, yeah. which was B, the Northwest Ordinance, also known as the Ordinance of 1787. Yeah, these, all the others are real things, but Northwest Order Ordinance was the one that happened in 87. And uh, that was North America's first anti-slavery legislation. So the Northwest Territory, that's uh, an area of the states uh, kind of uh, around the Great Lakes, but on the southern, on the US side. And they were, they were the first place to do it. They, it wasn't really organized into states yet, but uh, it, part of the process of seizing all the land meant that they needed to set up some, some sort of uh, rules for how, how states would be divided up. And uh, one of the rules was uh, under slavery. <clears throat> okay, question seven. Which part of the Northwest Ordinance is important from a Black Canadian history perspective? It's guidelines for creation of new states, it's establishment of territorial government, it's fugitive slave clause, or it's calls for establishment of a public university. So you might have to read between the lines a little bit, but in the, web, in the website that you use to learn what happened in 80s, 86? Oh. <laughs> or is it 87, Jen? <laughs> we can't go back a page, oh my goodness. I'm supposed to know this. <laughs> But uh, in there, you'll learn all the things that happen in the act. And all four of these are true, but only one is uh, kind of important to Canadians. Like, for example, public university in the States is really a big deal to, to Canadians. And this is a bit of a tougher one. So to save people time for Googling, all four of these are in the act. Reading, reading the act or Googling for the act isn't gonna help you. It's, you kind of just gotta um, imagine that you're a black Canadian enslaved up here. Uh, what would be important to you? We're at 90 seconds left with one vote to come. All right. And we're at five. We have three correct votes for C, it's Fugitive Slave Clause. 
All right, that's right. Because uh, if you could get across the border, um, then you were no longer enslaved. But then you'd have to find a way to survive down there. So. So. Okay. Here we go. Second last question. <clears throat> Sorry. Which other historical document quoted the Northwest Ordinance verbatim? The Emancipation Proclamation, the 13th Amendment, the Upper Canadian Act Against Slavery, or the Slavery Abolition Act? Okay, we have five votes, four correct. The answer was B, the 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a little loophole in the 13th Amendment about uh, you can, uh, where you're, there's no slavery ex unless you're in prison. <laughs> then they can, you know, and we, we talked about that uh, last year when we learned about reconstruction. So that loophole mm -hmm. came right out of the, uh, Northwest or ordinance. But, so. All right. Make sure you show us the scores so we know what's. Okay, so here we are <laughs> coming up on the final question, the lightning round question. Let's see. Look wow. at this. Everybody's in it. <laughs> it's a tight spread. <laughs> Anyone can Absolutely be in here. Absolutely, everyone is in it. Yeah, I said I said things could so, change quickly, and look, I was at the top, and now I'm at the bottom. <laughs> Redemption time, Carrie. Come on, on let's it. go. On it. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one, go. What does the USA's Northwest Ordinance have to do with Canadian Black history? Um, why don't you read uh, B, because it doesn't fit. Um, this is the beginning of the Underground Railroad, a key narrative of Canadian history writers who, neg who neglect the period when helped it enslaved people escape Canada for freedom in the U.S. I didn't size the window properly, sorry. <laughs> so. That's okay. Uh, long story short, everyone got the last question correct. So 
Drum roll, please. Rhonda! <laughs> Zack ahead at the end. By Welcome. 42 points, squishy, 42 <laughs> points, Rhonda gets it. All right. Well, congratulations, Rhonda. So I've, uh, I remember uh, picking these up from your house, so I know where that is. So I'll, <laughs> we'll drop one of these in there. And Sarah, if you want your um, calendar, just make sure you get me your address somehow in the private chat or email or public chat or, or whatever. Uh, if people want to hang around after for after party, that's uh, totally, totally cool. Because I got some exciting news I want to tell Rhonda before, uh, before she leaves. So yeah, did, did everyone have fun? Yeah, I had fun. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's really exciting uh, to see new people. So if you're if you're new, uh, definitely come back and bring people with you because we've told we've told everybody we know. <laughs> so it's, we're banging our heads against the wall. There's Shelly. Hello, Shelly. I can't tell any more people. Hey guys. And like, Shelly. Shelly, yay. Like, please post in the Facebook group and tell all the people in there to come because I, <laughs> I think we roped them into the Facebook group. And then, like, I mean, Michael, I'm thinking of Daryl specifically. He's very interested, but he's not here. So we need, like, reviews from people who are like, it's fun. You should come. It was, like, it was way harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> Mm, yeah. Shelly and I were like tweeting and she was like, this is way harder than and I was like, this one's really hard. I don't know what's going on. I almost left. I was like, no, no, just <laughs> poor sport. No, it was really good. It was fun. Five stars with quiz again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was really good. I liked yeah. it. Did you bookmark everything you researched? No, but I will go back because I open new tabs every time. <laughs> Okay. Uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's, that's right, yeah. Search histories for. I'm gonna right? Yeah, I know. Because I thought it would, like, I thought it would just come up. Um, you know, like in the Google search, like I didn't. I mean, obviously, duh. But like, I, I was like, oh, oh, okay. I have to read. So it was good. It was. <laughs> it was good. Like I know that makes me sound really dumb, but you know, I, I, it was good though. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot already. Okay. And by having to read, you probably picked up some other information that you didn't even realize that you yeah. picked up. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Good. No. It was like yeah. <laughs> it was so good. Awesome. That's how it is for me setting up the quiz. Well, or, or entering the quiz. Right. Well, yeah, because the the alternate options have to be plausible enough. So. You know, so it's like you can't just like, I mean, unlike the last question, you can't just like make stuff up. Uh, it has to be, right. you know, reasonable to make it a challenge. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Are all these places in Nova Scotia? I don't, I'm, I'm in California and I haven't even heard of the towns. <laughs> wow, that's exciting. California. Yeah. Yes, all, this pla all these places are in Nova Scotia. There's a really um, hmm. um, big Black Canadian presence out there. Uh, Winnipeg as well, uh, Toronto as well, but in the in the 1780s, it was it was all Nova Scotia pretty much. Oh, was that was that the primary uh, area of black population at that time? Yeah, it all started with the black loyalists who fought uh, on the side of the British in the War of Independence in exchange for their freedom. And what actually oh. happened is they the British kind of let abandon them. <laughs> <laughs> face the consequences in the states but there were there were quite enough uh that mm. made their they got out up in canada to, to become mm. a strong uh, population there big population so. and that sounds familiar actually because i recently read um i can't remember the name of the book um, but there was a book about black british history that i read in the past year that talked about of the loyalists ending up in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. I think it was called like Black and British or something. Yeah. Okay. So that talked about um, the Black loyalists okay. ending up in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Is it the Book of Negroes by any chance or the one that is oh, the movie made out of it? No, it was called okay. the Book of Negroes. 
Because that, that's an actual book that uh, was a list of people who had been. Yeah, no, this is a, a recently written book. Um, Black and British, a Forgotten History yep. by David Olasoga. Yeah, that's what I remember. Now that I think about it, I remember hearing about yep. Black loyalists, a lot of Black loyalists ending up in Nova Scotia after the war. Okay. I just want to talk about that last question for a second. The reason I made that the lightning round is I wanted everyone to learn that without Googling it. So <laughs> the answer isn't, uh, you know, I'm hungry or <laughs> I wish I'd gone right. to the bomber game. Um, the reason I put that in there is you're not going to find that on Google. You know, mm -hmm. everything up, up, everything the Canadian everything Canada has to say about the Underground Railroad is the, uh, yeah, Canada was a, a good place to, to, for black people and people tried to leave the States, but there was a period where it ran North to South and uh, you're not gonna find that because our history is not written by black people. You know? So uh, that's why I put it in there. And if uh, anyone would like to learn a little bit more about that, uh, I just put a link uh, in the chat uh, to a really good podcast that uh, there's some uh, Canadian people who know their history who should be writing the history that uh, CBC kind of you know moved to the center out of the margins and, and they're amazing. Um, I invited them to join us, but uh, we're not big enough to get high <laughs> profile speakers. So I'll put the link, link to the podcast in here. So um, one, one lady uh, does uh, historical performance art. So it, what she did is she walked up and down um, Toronto, up and down the streets, um, named after the slaveholders, and she just read out loud the names of the enslaved because they're they're busy. But most of the names got changed. I mean, but she read the names that are recorded there, so uh, that was uh, kind of cool. She's in the podcast, and then there's some historians that uh, um, contributed as well. So it's um, definitely worth your time. I'll put it in queue. Yeah. Absolutely. So Sarah, you said you found us on Facebook. Are, are you in our Facebook group? Uh, no, I was just looking for uh, trivia games, but this one's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, normally yeah, trivia, trivia you have, <laughs> if you don't know, you you lose out, right? <laughs> but none of us know here. It's, it's, it's <laughs> we kind of turn that on its head. <laughs> 